We are now going to talk about regression. In particular we will talk about PLS regression or partial least squares regression. We will also briefly mention PCR, principal component regression, and MLR, multiple linear regression. But we will focus on PLS regression as a general way to perform calibration and regression. First we will discuss why we need regression and then we will talk about the theory behind PLS. We will give an example showing how it works in practice and then we will discuss some of the important diagnostics that are used when developing PLS models. When we do PCA we have one data matrix, one table of data, and we look into the data, for example, using PCA in order to explore and visualize the data table. Multivariate regression is for the situation when you have two blocks of data. It's for correlating the information in one block to the information in another one. Typically the X matrix will be a cheap a measurement of some sort and the Y matrix is a property that you want to predict from the X variation uh, because it, the Y values are maybe expensive or difficult or time consuming. For example, in producing marzipan it's very important that you have the right water concentration in various steps of the process. You cannot do a classical water determination online. That is time consuming and will not work in practice. But if you could measure a near infrared spectrum and then predict the water, water concentration from that spectrum, then you would be able to implement an online system ensuring that the process was running smoothly. Likewise, for example, in the production of tablets, you would like to be able to use some sort of spectroscopic equipment in order to be able to do, do non-destructive analysis of the quality of the tablets. These are just two examples. There are numerous examples on what calibration and regression can be used for. We will discuss the theory of PLS regression uh, in a slightly different way than what is usually done because we will use our knowledge of the PCA model to explain how PLS works. The general regression problem involves a multivariate X, so we have many J variables in our X block, and we have a Y block which is also multivariate. This is called PLS2 regression when we try to build a regression model between multivariate X and multivariate Y. In some situations we only have one uh, Y variable and that is called PLS1 but the method essentially is doing the same. What we want to is to develop a model so that in the future we will not need both X and Y values but just X and then using X and the model we are able to predict what the Y values would be. In order to do so we can think of for example performing a PCA on our Y matrix. In the PCA section we saw that it's very often useful to do PCA on matrices because typically they have lower rank, they can be described by fewer components than the original number of variables. So in this case we could do a PCA on Y and we would then be able to describe approximately our Y matrix as the, sc the scores times loadings. We will use the names U for scores and Q for the loadings in order not to confuse them with scores and loadings of X. So if that description is reasonable that means that we actually do not have to predict Y itself. We need only to predict U and from that we will be able to predict Y as well. If you remember the example with weight and height, we had a situation where we had a one component model. And in the left corner you can see the scores and loadings uh, 
uh, of a PCA model of those data. Now assume that we can estimate the scores, the U values, somehow. Then we know that if we multiply the score by the corresponding loadings, in this case there's only two, because we have only weight and height, well if we multiply those two, we will get our approximation of the data. So that means we don't have to predict Y directly. We just have to predict the scores of Y, and then from the scores and loadings we can get the actual estimate of Y. We can do exactly the same on the X side. We can make a PCA model, and that would look similar to PCA, but it wouldn't be exactly the same scores and loadings. But we could develop a model X equals the scores times the loadings plus some residuals. So now we have a PCA model of X and we have a PCA model of Y. In reality, the two models that we get here in PLS are not exactly the same as PCA models, but we'll get back to that. Here we have shown how these two models look, for example for a free component model. We would have free scores in X, free scores in Y, and free loadings in X and Y. Now the interesting thing is that in PLS we develop our model, our scores and loadings, in such a way that the first score in X, so T1, has maximum covariance with the first score in Y, U1. What does that mean? Well that means that we can predict the first score in Y from the first score in X. So as soon as we have our score values in X, we can then predict the score values in, in Y. And we saw before that if we have the score values in Y, we can also predict Y. So this is really the heart of PLS. This is what defines PLS. It finds components in such a way that they, their score values have maximum covariance. U1 has maximum covariance with T1, U2 has maximum covariance with T2, etc. Let's take an example to make it more specific. Here's an example of a very small data set. We have an X block, two variables, height and distance to work, and from those values we want to predict two Y values, the weight and the shoe size. Here we have shown the two uh, data matrices in scatter plots. So to the left we have the X block and to the right we have the Y block. And we can see that each person is just a point in X space and a point in Y space. So now we want to develop a model from which we are able to predict from X to Y. And we do that in PLS by taking out one component at a time. So let's start by finding the first component. We could do PCA on X and PCA on Y. And what you see here is the loading vector of a PCA on X and a PCA on Y. From these two loadings we also can calculate the score values. And these score values can then be plotted against each other. So we can get the score value from X and we can see that for me that score value is close to zero because I am located close to 0, 0.0 or to the center of uh, our model. And likewise I will have a score value in the Y dimension and I can plot these two against each other. But you can see in the scatter plot below that this model where we're actually doing PCA is not very good for predicting the U scores. I wanted to have a model where I could predict U from T. So in PLS we do not exactly do PCA on X and Y, we do something differently.